that um, the Lord is leading us again for the last day of our conference. And so I would like that if you may please stand as we'll sing the song number 75, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Song number 75, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
want her days and give her healing. Oh Lord, we pray for the people around the world, uh, near and far, for those who are persecuted, those who are preaching the gospel. Lord, be with many souls who need to be saved and give us thy grace in this hour and forgive us our sins. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Now, this time, welcome again those that are coming. And um, at this time, we have uh, the last presentation of this conference. And this will be done by uh, Brother Silva. And the title of this uh, presentation is, Can We Have an Assurance of Salvation? And this is a question that we all need to have an answer for. So, Brother Silva. Dear brethren, we are very thankful to the Lord for this wonderful day that we enjoy together and uh, I will ask you to pray so that the Holy Spirit can guide us so that we can understand clearly God's Word. Brethren, when I was 17 years old, I decided to be a driver. Then what did I do? I bought a book. The book, the title book was How to Be a Driver with 20 Lessons. Then I started the whole book. Then I believed that was a, I was a driver already. Then uh, one brother came to me. He said, Brother Silva, could you take this car to another city? Yes, yes, I can. I was sure of that. <laughs> and then he gave me the key. But I never drove a car. I just started the book. When I tried to start the car, the car jumped almost two meters. Then I, I didn't become discouraged. I try again, another jump. And the brother was a Japanese brother. He opened his eyes. He said, Brother Silva, you need to learn more lessons. <laughs> then there, are, there were several young men there. And I was so ashamed, so humbled to the dust. Now, the point is that, was I sure about driving? Yes, I was sure, but only theoretically. I would call superficial assurance, superficial, superficial assurance. I, ha I had no practice at all, only theory. I studied the whole book. I was convinced that I was a driver. Remember, when you talk about assurance of salvation, I try to divide the people in three groups. If you find that we have some more group, you please help me. One group, they have no assurance at all. I'm talking about the church. We have many brethren, they are faithful, and they are in the church, they, they believe like that. I will be firm in the church till the end. Let us see if it's the end I will be saved. But if we ask them, are you sure about your salvation? They say, no, I'm not sure. That's one class. Another group, they have official assurance, as I had about driving. Group, they have authentic assurance. They are sure about their salvation. How about you here? I put a question just for reflection. Are you sure about your salvation? Brethren, when Christ invites us to go to him, and we believe that we go to him, there we believe that we surrender our life to Christ, but I'm not sure. What's the reason why I'm not sure about my salvation? Some people say, I, I'm not sure if Christ accepts me. Actually, we cannot have doubt about that. Because he paid the price. He paid the price. And uh, he would not say, come to me. And, uh, and he, he pushed me out. No. He, that's not his character. He said, come, come to me and I'll give you rest for your soul. 
Then Christ, when he invites us to go to him, he says, I will be with you. How long? Always. I will be with you always. Till the end. Brethren, we find uh, many important lessons for our Christian life in the life of Peter. Do you remember, brethren, in the last night that Christ was spent with his disciples, he said to Peter, Peter, look, all of you this, tonight will you abandon me. What was the answer of Peter? It's true. All can forsake you, but not me. I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Now, Brad, some question. Was Peter sincere? I believe so. He was sincere. Was he sure about his, his declaration? Yes, he was sure. I say theoretically. Problem, a serious problem that many of us, we have the same problem. Then the Spirit prophecy says, in his earliest discipleship, Peter thought himself strong. Then he believed that he was strong. Now, Brad, special attention here. Like the Pharisee, in his own estimation, he was not as other men are. What was the problem of Peter? He didn't know himself. And uh, could you say that he was a Pharisee? Yes, self-confident. But uh, many of us, we are Pharisees. Brother, you, you don't be offended with me, please. <laughs> many of us, we are Pharisees. We trust in ourselves. When Christ on the eve of his betrayal forwarded, forwarded him, his disciples, all you shall be offended because of me this night, Peter confidently declared, although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Peter did not know his own danger. Self-confidence misled him. He thought himself able to withstand the temptation. But in a few short hours, he test, the test came, and with cursing and swearing, he denied his Lord. Let us analyze the, the situation. Peter didn't know himself. Now a question, did he know Christ? Did he know Christ? I don't think so. I believe that when he said, I don't know this man, he was telling the truth. Brethren, the only way we can know ourselves is knowing Christ. What's the main problem of the Pharisee? The Pharisee, he compares himself with others. Then he, he feels that he is Good, because he compared himself with others. And especially the Pharisee, he, they like, he likes to, to compare himself with people worse than him. The worst is the other, the better he feels himself. Then when Peter said, I'm not like other disciples, they can deny you, but not me. Then understand that if we know Christ, we know ourselves. I came to this conclusion that Peter didn't know Christ. Then when he said, I don't know this man, he was sincere. He didn't know Christ. It's true, he was denying Christ. Paul says, we, we know Christ not as in the flesh. We should know Christ as not just a man. Because you, you remember, brethren, the, the disciples, they had a vision of Christ about a, a military conqueror. He will be a king to take the throne of the, Judah, to be the emperor, to give them high position. 
They didn't know Christ as they should know. Then when the night came, it says he is surprised and shocked. When he denied Christ, but it happened a very important thing. Christ was being judged and despised and scorned, and he turned to look to, Christ, to Peter. He looked to Peter, to his eyes. Peter looked to the eyes of Christ. Brethren, I believe that the conversion of Peter was that moment. He looked to the, the eye of Christ. Christ looked to his eyes. Now he left the place. He went to Gethsemane. And he cried bitterly. And Christ had said before, Peter, Peter, I'm praying for you. When you are converted, confirm your brethren. I believe that Peter was converted that night. He became a new man. At that moment, Christ looked at Peter and beneath that grieved look in which compassion and love for him were blended, Peter understood himself. Let us put another word. Peter knew himself. Brother, I would like to stress this point. We can know ourselves only when we know Christ. That's, the, that's a condition for salvation. That's condition for assurance of salvation. Because, brethren, look, when I believe that I'm good, I'm better than others, I'm not like other men, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. This, this fact reveals that I don't know myself. I don't know Christ. Then I believe that Peter... He was sure about he, what he was talking about. I will not deny you tonight. But he was trusting himself. Brethren, can we have a source of salvation when we trust in ourselves? No, cannot. Uh, I continue reading here. Peter falls was not instantaneous, but gradual. Self-confidence led him to, to the belief that he was saved. That's a very important point because there is to think that we are saved. One is because we trust in ourselves. That's a dangerous ground. And step after step, was taken in downward path until he could deny his master. Never can we safely put confidence in self. That's the key point. Never can we safely put confidence in self or feel this side of heaven that we are secure against temptation. Did you realize, Brad, that uh, we are talking about trust in self? <coughs> Those who accept the Savior, however sincere their conversion, should never be taught to say, to feel that they are saved. Brad, I special attention here because we, we consider some apparent contradiction. Because Spirit prophecy says that we sh should never say or think or feel that we are saved. Trusting in himself. Is it clear the point? We cannot be assured, be assured, of, our, assured of our salvation while we trust in self. Now, let us read something from Paul. Brethren, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we find here a very special experience of Paul. 
he said that to third heaven. Brethren, sadly, we have a so corrupt nature that when we are successful with something, how do we feel? Because Satan has different traps for us. When we try to do something and we are successful, and people come and say, brother, congratulations, you are successful. How do you feel? Great. Ooh. I'm someone. <laughs> Do you remember Elijah after his great victory over the false prophets? What happened to him? Run away from Why? Yeah, because before he was so victorious, then Satan worked in different ways. If we are defeated, he said, you, you are a failure. You cannot go ahead. Then Satan tried to destroy us because he failed. When we are overcomers, he said, look, you are great. Then he tried to, to destroy us in different ways. Then Paul had the experience. You know, brother, Paul used to be a, a very proud man. You remember that? Brother, let, let me say something. It's not easy even for the Lord to save a Pharisee. He can. If there are Pharisees here, don't be discouraged. God can save even Pharisees. I used to say God can save even reformers. Then don't be discouraged. God can save us. Now, when Paul went to the third heaven, how did he feel? Oh, I'm special. I'm special. Now, here, verse 7, he says, And lest I should be exalted above measure, what was his temptation? To be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. What did God give, give him to save him from pride? God gave him a thorn in the flesh. And brethren, the uh, spirit of prophecy makes clear that this thorn in the flesh was a deficient in his vision. He could not see very well. But interesting enough that uh, Paul, he resurrected people. He healed people. He performed several miracles. And he could not heal himself. And he prayed, he said, I prayed three times to the Lord to remove that thorn in my flesh. What did the Lord say? Peter, uh, Paul, please don't talk about this anymore. Don't talk about this anymore. My grace is sufficient to you. But what was the purpose of the thorn in the flesh? What was the, the purpose? To humble him, to keep him humble. A brethren, when Sister White was invited to be a prophetess, she was afraid to be proud of her call. And the Lord said, Don't worry about that, I'll take care of that. Then, always, when Sister White was tempted to be exalted, she was sick. God has different ways to keep us humble. Then, it says here, verse 7, There was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For they think I besought the Lord thrice, that I might, did my depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient to you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Brethren, 
it seems a kind of a paradox. When are we strong in the Lord? When we, we feel that we are weak. When we cannot trust in ourselves. Then, brethren, when I think that I am strong, then I'm weak. When I recognize then that I am weak, then I'm strong in the Lord. Do you know why? When I cannot trust in myself, then I trust wholly in the Lord. Then I'm strong. Then Paul says, verse 9, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Brother, did you, did you find here the secret of strength in the Lord? How can we be strong in the Lord? When we know ourselves that we are. Brethren, we are nothing without Christ. In Christ, we are everything. But out, out of, of Christ, we are nothing. Then Paul says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Then when can we be sure about our salvation? Uh, let's go to first, second Timothy, one twelve, for the which cause I also suffer the thing. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I am believed. I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Brethren, one question. Was Paul sure about his salvation? But some people say, ah, but that's Paul. <laughs> that's Paul, not me. Brethren, sometimes we are trying to be humble, but actually we are, we are, we are the opposite. Let us think this way. Christ says, come to me. I will receive you. I will give you rest. Then I say, I, I cannot go because Christ did not receive me. What I'm telling is that Christ is a liar. Did you get the point? If he says, all who come to me, in no way I cast him out. He, he assured, assures that. But we say, no, I cannot go to Christ. I cannot because I am so sinful. I'm a big sinner, a great sinner, and uh, he'll not receive me. But if he promised to receive me, and I say that he'll not receive me. I remember when I was reading Wagoner, he says, would you dare to call Christ a liar? I was shocked. No, no way. But when he, he said that he will receive you, and you refuse to go because you don't believe that he will receive you, we are calling him a liar. Do you agree? That's true. First Corinthians one eighteen. What did Paul say? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. Did Paul believe that he was saved? Yes. Unto us which are saved. is the power of God. And uh, we read yesterday Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this very thing. That he which had begun a good work in you. Will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Then God is, he had begun a work in my life. He had begun a work in your life. What is his promise? I will finish the work till the end. And Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. 
I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. Henceforth, there is laid upon up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Brethren, by the way, when we think about the second coming of Christ, are we happy or are we sad? Let us think about that. When I know that Christ is coming and I think seriously about his coming, am I happy or am I sad? Would I say, oh Lord, wait for a while, I'm not prepared. I have some, I need to finish my project later, but please don't come, I'm not prepared. Brethren, when we love someone, or wife, or children, or some, someone, special people, and we know that they are arriving. What's our reaction? Oh, we start count down the minutes. Oh, he's coming, she's coming, he's coming. Sometimes we, we cannot sleep because they are concerned about his coming. He can, can come tonight, I will be ready to receive him. But Christ, Christ is all for us. Our best friend, our Savior, our Lord. He gave his life for me personally. Am I ready with, ready with his coming? Am I happy? Let us think about that. Now let us consider 1 John chapter 4, 17 and 18. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. But how about when we think about judgment? Are we happy or are we afraid? But uh, uh, John says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Then are we afraid of judgment? Are we afraid of the second coming of Christ? Why? Then John explains, in perfect love there is no, no fear in the day of judgment. Brethren, I like very much some word of Luther. Say, when I look to my sins, I ask, how can I be saved? But when I look to Calvary, I ask, how can I be lost? Then, but where should be our mind? Uh, brethren, you have a powerful quotation here in Testimony to Ministers 443. We need a thorough reformation in our churches. The converting power of God must come into the church. Seek the Lord most earnestly. Put away your sins. Brethren, here is the key point for our assurance of salvation. What should we do? Brother, yesterday was mentioned here in the last words before leaving this place. Do you remember? Love Christ. We cannot love sin. It's clear? But uh, many brother, they are trying to, to have Christ and 
keep their sins. Then we cannot have assurance in like, like that. Do, do you remember the experience of Judah? He was trying to keep Christ, his leader. He was trying to keep money. Same time. He was trying to keep both. And he lost both. Brad, I'll repeat this point here. Seek the Lord most earnestly. Put away your sins. Words, that's, this, this means uh, total surrender to Christ. Let God set you apart to the work. Purify your souls by obeying the truth. Faith without work is dead. Put not off the day of preparation. Slumber not in a state of unpreparedness. Have no oil in your vessels with your lamps. It's not here, text. Okay. Brethren, I use stress these words here. Let none leave their safety for eternity to hang upon a peradventure. Let not the question remain in perilous uncertainty. Ask yourselves earnestly, am I among the saved or the unsaved? Shall I stand or shall not stand? He only that has clean hands and pure heart shall stand that day. Brethren, we are talking here about complete surrender to Christ. I remember my, my father used to be a Methodist, and he said that uh, one Sunday evening the pastor was preaching, and he made an appeal. They started singing, I surrender all, I surrender all, I surrender all. And there was a man in the church, he was addicted to smoking. And when he was singing, I surrender all, he said in low voice, but smoke. I surrender all, but smoking. I surrender all, but smoking. Maybe we don't say that, but uh, in our we are saying something like that. I surrender all, but uh, there are kind of sin that I, I love. I cannot live without this kind of sin. Can we be sure about our salvation this way? No. Christ only accepts total surrender. He cannot be partner, partner with Satan with sin. Now, another question, brethren. There are very sincere brethren in our church, and they, they do their best. They are hospitable people. They are very kind people. They cooperate with the church, but they're not, they're not sure about salvation also either. Is there any case like that? Yes, there are. What's the problem? You remember the phrase of Luther? When I look to my sins, I ask, how can I be saved? When I look to Christ, I ask, how can I be lost? Then look what said the Spirit of Prophecy. Many make a serious mistake in their religious life by keep, keeping the attention fixed upon their feelings and thus judging of their advancement or decline. What's the problem here? I try to find assurance of salvation, look to myself. What's the result? What do I find in myself? What do I find in myself? Virtues? Righteousness? No. Feelings. 
are not a safe criterion. We are not to look within for evidence of our acceptance with God. We shall find nothing but that which will discourage us. Then what the result when I look to myself? Brethren, it was confirmed that uh, one of the main causes of, uh, how you say, depression, one of the main causes of depression is looking to himself. I remember, brethren, once I was in California, my wife was traveling to Brazil, and I was alone at home. And uh, in Moraya Heights, they're a very quiet place in the middle of nature. Then I start being depressed a little bit. Then I remember one sister who was dying with cancer, terminal, terminal condition. I immediately left home and I went to visit that sister. Brethren, my depression disappeared immediately. I was so happy. That sister was so encouraging. Then uh, there are many causes for depression, but one of the, the main cause is self. I look to myself, I, I'm concerned about myself, I examine myself, I'm concerned about tomorrow, I'm concerned about the past. Look, our only hope is looking into Jesus. Only hope. The author and finisher of our faith. There is everything in him to inspire with hope, with faith, and with courage. He is our righteousness, our consolation, and rejoicing. Then, brethren, can we be sure about our salvation? Yes. How? Look into Jesus. Brother, it's not just to look to Jesus sometime. No. It's keep looking. Keep looking to Jesus. Those who look within for comfort will become weary and disappointed. A sense of our weakness and unworthiness should lead us with humility of heart to plead the atoning sacrifice of Christ. As we rely upon his merits, we shall find rest and peace and joy. He saves to the, he saves to the uttermost who come unto him, unto God by him. We need to trust in Jesus daily, hourly. She has promised that as our day, our strength shall be. By his grace, we may bear all the burdens of the present and perform its duties. But many are weighed down by the anticipation of future troubles. Brad, did, you have, did it happen to you that uh, you could not sleep because you are concerned about the future? Oh, what is what come tomorrow? Oh, next, next week. Oh, time of trouble. How can I survive the time of trouble? But uh, God doesn't give us grace today for the time of trouble. He gives us grace today for today. I know, Brad, that's not easy to learn this lesson, to live a day at a time. Not easy. Either, either Satan tempts us to, to bring past problems or to create future problems. That's a Satan's trap. They are constantly seeking to bring tomorrow's burden into today. Thus, a large share of all their trials are imaginary. For these, Jesus has made no provision. Then, Brad, we, have, we don't have grace for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we receive grace for tomorrow. Today, we have grace for today. He promises grace. He promises grace only for the day. 
He bid us not to be burdened ourselves with the cares and troubles of the world. For sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The, now, brother, it says here that that is sin. To bring problem for, for, from the past for today. Or future problem for today, that's a sin. The habit of brooding over anticipated evils is unwise and unchristian. In thus doing, we fail to enjoy the blessing and to improve the opportunity of the present. The Lord requires to perform the duties of today and to endure its trials. We are today to watch that we offend not in word or deed. We must today praise and honor, honor God. By the exercise of living faith today, we are to conquer the enemy. We must today seek God and be determined that we will not rest satisfied without his presence. We should watch and work and pray as though these were the last day that would be granted to us. How intensely earnest then would be our life. How closely would we follow Jesus in all our words and deeds. Brethren, summarizing, when we try to believe that we are saved ourselves, that's a false assurance. But when we keep looking to Jesus, as he says, the hourly, daily, then we can be sure about our salvation. Not in ourselves, but in Christ. But when we recognize that we are sinful people, we are weak, we are imperfect, and we put all our trust in Jesus, we distrust in ourselves, we trust in Jesus, then we find assurance of our salvation. But there is another important point in 1 John 1, 7. First John one seven. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin. Then, brother, by God's grace, we should walk in the light. Then uh, our, our religion is not just theoretical. As I did that time when I tried to drive the car, just because I read the book. No, I need to practice. Then, believing and obeying. Believe and obeying. That's our assurance. As we keep looking to Christ, we cannot tolerate sin in our life. But I came to the conclusion that when we are real Christian, we are very tolerant with others, but we are very severe with ourselves. When we are Pharisee, it's the opposite. We are tolerant with ourselves and intolerant with others. Then, brethren, can we be sure about our salvation? Yes. We can. We need that. Because Christ is not a liar. Christ always tells the truth. He who comes to me, in no way I will cast him out. And he who had begun a good work in our life will finish it. But brethren, let us take our looking out of us. Let us look to Christ. As we look to ourselves, we find only reason for deception, for disappointment, for frustration. As we look to Christ, we are comforted, we are strengthened. And as says Paul, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. 
I'm weak myself, but I'm strong in the Lord. May the Lord help so that we can keep our connection with him every moment. Brethren, this is our main battle, keeping our connection with Christ. And he will give us assurance, he will give us grace to be victorious of all kind of temptation, all kind of sin. May the Lord give us this blessing to each one of us here. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother, for this presentation. Um, we hope that um, we really be sure of our calling and that we answer to the Lord when he is calling us and that we accept his salvation. Now, this time, before we're closing, I will invite uh, Jennifer. She has an uh, instrumental piece, and I will invite her to play a little um, instrument. Praise to God for this uh, music, and uh, we hope that uh, more and more young people will learn instruments, so we have more and more people. At this time, we'll now stand for uh, the song um, number 275, 275, I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he has made known.
Our dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior, we come before thee this beautiful morning with thanksgiving for the wonderful plan of salvation. For Christ who gave his perfect life on Calvary in our behalf. Because he is interceding for us, presenting his righteousness for us. Because he is coming soon to take us home. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we enjoy with our brethren, our friends, together in this place. And then help us, Lord, to be not only hearers, give us grace to practice thy words. Give us grace to obey thy instructions, to keep our connection with Christ. Give us love for thy, thy word. Help us to keep communion with thee through prayer and help us to tell others about your love. Give us, Lord, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Help us to represent your character wherever we go, especially in our families, in our homes. Bless all the family here represented. Bless the young people. Bless the children. And help us, Lord, so that we can be ready today for the coming of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to, to do thy work according to thy will. To redeem the time. To help many people who are perishing in the world to know Jesus are the only hope of salvation. Remain with us in the remaining hours this day. Be with us, guide us, protect us, and take us safely to our homes. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, it has been suggested uh, to hear again the choir, the men choir. So I'll ask uh, the men choir to be prepared while well, I invite Brother Walter to please uh, come forward for the announcements. May I kindly ask uh, Brother Liviu, Brother Eli, Brother Luban to join us on the platform. Is Brother Luban Bukotic with us this morning? We will be coming to the closure of the conference. Actually, you know, and on this earth, everything has a beginning and the end. But as Brother has presented this message, um, at this time, uh, I feel weak. <laughs> I don't feel very strong. I, I, you just realize how dependent, how transitory you are, but the only place I can look is Jesus Christ. And um, we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have felt the presence of God with us here. And brethren, we ask all those who are not members of the choir to stay in the sanctuary, as we will be having closing ceremony and benediction here. Um, what can I say? We, we have been blessed this weekend. We, we have been immensely blessed. You know, I, from the Friday evening until this moment, the messages have been so powerful, so uh, wonderful. Uh, God has um, touched us. Uh, we felt we have been on the mountain. As one brother said, yeah, on the mountains there are wonderful experiences. And in the valleys there are battles. There are difficult moments we go through. But we have been on the mountain. And uh, now, brethren, I'd like to thank God for this wonderful experience. I'd like to thank you all who have come here and who have been part of this program. I pray that as you leave this place that you don't forget what you have learned here. You know, brethren, please remember this. Every day we have to make our election and calling sure. We should not leave it for tomorrow. We should not keep the sins in our lives. We should deal with them, you know, seriously. And uh, so this is my desire that we find Jesus Christ, that we are not afraid of future, that we are not haunted by past, but that we live firmly in the present. 
in communion with Jesus Christ, trusting him fully, not trusting ourselves. But then I would ask for quite, uh, um, is, is there any noise coming from the lobby? Um, can we close the door, please? Thank you. Thank you for cooperation. So, brethren, we will not make long speeches here. I would like, uh, do we have a, a musical item ready for now? This is my question. Um, who is in charge of music? Is Sister Helen here? Uh-huh. Uh, Brother Milan, is it possible that Sister Helen can come just to ask her? So, Brother, thank you for your patience. We have just asked to make sure. We would like to know what musical items will be performed right now. Uh, we are not ready. Um, I, I'm, it's a little bit early, I think, for the choir because we would like to allow Brethren to say a few words. And um, I did not know that the choir will be singing at this time. Um, so, um, Brother Eli, or oh, Brother, well, let's go with Brother, no, 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 I mean, you, you were Friday, first speaker, if you may just say a few words to the congregation briefly, because the choir is ready, so. <laughs> Yes, good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and visitors. I think that is an, an amazing outcome uh, in terms of uh, finding out how we can find our peace in Christ. Is that true? So today we discovered uh, a great um, savior, and at the same time we discovered uh, great sinners in, within us. And uh, I'm living this congregation uh, completely satisfied with the food, the spiritual food that nourished our minds and our hearts uh, since Friday evening until today in the morning. A great sinner needs a great Savior. And that great Savior is Jesus Christ. In terms of uh, personally myself, you know, I want to, for those who are reading uh, the Spirit of Prophecy, uh, there is an, a very interesting element in the picture. You know, you have these three, three, uh, one, uh, three, three, three in the scripture all the time. You have uh, three times I heard a voice. Three times happened these three times. All over the scripture, you travel with number three. Is that true? So, what is very interesting when, when Jesus came to be incarnated as the Son of Man? The heaven and the earth united with a with a with a uh, with a singing. Worthy is the Lamb. When Christ died on the cross of Calvary and resurrected, going back to the Father, the heaven and the earth uh, saying, "Worthy, worthy is the Lamb." When He is coming back to take us home, the heaven and the earth will sing, "Worthy, worthy." Worthy. For those who would like to have a proof, Testimonies Volume 8 says, Worthy is the Lamb when Jesus was born. And then you have Christ Object Lessons, Worthy, worthy is the Lamb when He died and resurrected for our sins. And when He comes back and takes us back to the Father, we all will sing, Worthy, worthy, worthy. What I can say today before I say farewell to all of you brothers and sisters, my co-fellow nationals Canadians, I would like to say I love him, I love him, I love him. Amen. Once again, brethren, I want to thank God for the opportunity he gave me to be here with you. Thank you also for giving me this opportunity, for all the hospitality that you have always showed. And uh, I wish my family had been here also. Uh, they would be blessed as I was. But I pray that God may help me to take with me these blessings and share with them. And I'm sure they will be blessed also to know about the wonderful moments we enjoy together here. So praise be the Lord. And I want to leave with you a text from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, that says, Finally, brethren, 
Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think of these things. May the peace of God be with all of us. Amen. Amen. Dear brethren, I'm very thankful to the Lord for this wonderful time that we enjoy together here. We are always learning. We can read the Bible 50 times or 100 times. We are always learning new, new lessons. And I'd like to leave with you 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, 3 to 5. Blessed be God, even the Father of Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound by Christ. But Brandon, as we read the, the letter of Paul, Christ is the center. Christ is the beginning, Christ is the end, Christ is the center. In him is our only hope. May the Lord help so that we can take this precious lesson to our families, to our homes. That's my wish and prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brendan, for the words that you have shared with our congregation. And Brendan, I'd like to just briefly, before we uh, have the benediction and the closing hymn, uh, I'd like to say that I would wish to thank the Brendan who have come here. Who have, they have busy schedules, but they have graciously responded. That they came here, prepared beautiful studies for us. And we thank you, and we wish you safe travel and take our greetings to your respective churches and communities. Now, second thing, I'd like to thank also the co-workers, uh, workers in our conference, Brother Dorin, Brother Etienne, and Brother George, and uh, they have been a great help to me. I uh, really, this conference was easier for me because of the able help and coordination of uh, various events and tasks. The music department worked very well. Uh, you have heard it, you have seen it, and uh, we really appreciate the work they have done. Uh, Sister Helen uh, Vukotic as a choir leader, and other brethren, Sister Vera Shkiopo, and all the choir members. We thank the kitchen staff, Sister Milita Poznic O'Connor, who uh, has been coordinator for food services and kitchen work, and Tamara Lukic, who has been her assistant, and all the sisters who have helped. People who have cleaned the church premises here, uh, people who have transported people, food items, and so on. We wish to thank uh, brethren who have cleaned the property here, who have accommodated our guests, who have served at the tables. I mean, I can g just go on and on. To all of you, uh, we please accept our heartfelt thanks. And we thank God who gave us wonderful weather, uh, beautiful atmosphere here, and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So brethren, uh, uh, we will continue this afternoon. That is a youth program, a children's program in Puslinch after we have lunch and please notice we will have also after we have benediction here we will go outside on the stairs of the church and have a photo session and after that we will also have the meal uh, so please remember that this is the procedure benediction photo session and then we will be going downstairs i mean to have the meal so brethren may the lord be with you and don't forget the theme of this conference Saved by grace, judged by works. Grace has to produce good works. So as we leave this place, may this grace of God, that is active, dynamic force, that transforms our lives, be with us in Jesus Christ in the center of the message. At this time, we invite the choir to come forward and to present the last musical item.
I would ask the choir members to stand where they are, just to turn toward the pulpit. And uh, the Let's bow our heads. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. 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 So you can be seated. Thank you very, very much, brethren, for being with us. We trust that you have enjoyed this conference and the fellowship. Uh, we thank the brethren who have come from the United States, traveling long distances. And we wish that you still enjoy the fellowship as we will proceed with a photo session and with a lunch and a free time. So, brethren, uh, we will ask uh, uh, the ushers to come forward to usher us out and uh, from the first rows and the brethren will be at the door to greet everyone. Offerings. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. So we have to be seated for a moment. I'm sorry for that. Yes, if we may be seated for a moment, please. Well, Canadians are generous, brethren. We don't charge anything for accommodation and food. This is a free will offering um, for the cost of the conference. So as you 